Hello and welcome to the Nish Guardi to podcast series. And uh, we continue profiling fantastic personalities and companies uh, pushing forward the boundaries of business and technology. And uh, today and uh, in this series, we are powered by IBM Tech Exchange Summit MA 2024. Today, I'm quite excited to welcome to the series uh, Marcus Norberg. And uh, Norbergs is uh, an, uh, a works for Appendo, which is a very interesting company uh, headquartered in Stockholm, but uh, with offices in, in uh, Transvaal. Transvaal, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> in the most cold part of oh. Sweden. And uh, I'm quite excited to talk about uh, the fantastic things you guys are doing. So, first of all, tell us a bit about you. Well, I'm not a techie guy. Uh, I'm uh, working with people, but my people that I work with are techie humans. So uh, what I like, really like to do is, uh, as I said to you before, I, we're trying to do things no one has done before. And to do that, you have to push the limit on myself, my employees, my boss, the organization. And I think that we have found a way, you know, to find this uh, how do we come up with the new ideas? How do we have it? You know, the innovation. Everybody talks about the golden stuff, the innovation. How do we innovate? And for our uh, innovate is the same thing as <clears throat> you, you don't succeed every time. But sometimes you're going to succeed because the only thing that you learn is to do something. So we have tried to do that with, with IBM technology and we have done many mistakes with IBM technology but we have made many new inventions with IBM technology. For example, like taking the IBM Watson technology, I think it was three years ago when we took the IBM technology and said, we can't have it in the cloud. We need to have it in a Swedish mountain, deep down. So no cloud here. So we can be GTPR, uh, no data is going from Sweden and so on, because our customers, that was a very important demand. No data gets out of Sweden. So when we talked about IBM uh, uh, with this, you know, it was hybrid cloud, hybrid cloud, 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 everything is SaaS. But we uh, managed to put the IBM Watson technology in Sweden. So what we are doing right now is to evolve that technology who was Ada, building a Watson Assistant, and Watson Discovery, and trying to get our customers to understand the difference between an ordinary chatbot and a digital worker. Because, you know, Watson Assistant that Discovery for us was a digital worker, assistant, not an ordinary chatbot. Uh, but, you know, when we did this, the RPO race was at its prime. So everybody talked about in automation, it was RPA, 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 RPA. Uh, and then when RPA didn't go so well, uh, AI came in. And it's, uh, you know, the race that's been going on for the last six months. Uh, so, as I said to Dawn, the first time I heard about what's next, I think it was in April, and May last year. The first time that I heard what's next, and I said to my developers, does anybody know what's, what's, what, what is what's next? Please, please enlighten me. What is what's next? I, I see it on LinkedIn. I see it on YouTube. What's next? What is it? So from there to where we are today, we are with, where we are transforming our ADA to ADA X with the what's next technology, with the dot AI, with the dot ADA, and now the last component is governance. So that what that is what we are doing. We are transforming the older IBM technology in the chatbot digital assistant area with a new one, with the next. So that is what we are doing. And that's also trying and error. When we, when we started with looking at what is, what is .ai, is that handling all the generated AI, the large language model, what does it do and how does it work? Uh, what, 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 is, what is a foundation model? Oh, please, enlighten me. <laughs> uh, so we did that and then we, went on to dot data uh, okay what is dot data 
if we talk to a BI person, would he understand what a data lake is? Is data lake something that's come from IBM or is it something that is a branch standard? Yeah, it's a branch standard. Okay, but what does it do that is so magical? So we looked at that. And then we try how does .ai and .data work together? So we did that. And then when we had done that, we talked about, because we are an automation company, we work a lot with process optimization. So we thought about how, how when you have a, a business process, how do Watson X and Ada X enhance, empower the business process? How do you orc and how do you orchestrate your AI services from a process view? So we did that. And we presented that to our clients and customers. And then we had one big, big, important component left. And that was governance. And we talked about this with our clients in September, October. And then it's going to be released in November. And we tried to figure out what's inside this. What is, what is inside? Is it going to be that and that and that? So we, yeah, maybe that, <laughs> maybe that, and maybe that. Uh, so when we found out about uh, the launch in December, uh, we pretty much uh, get all our effort in how the governance module works because that's what every, everybody is talking about right now is governance. Because we know that the technology that IBM has on the generative AI, it's competitive. We know when it comes to the data, we know that the data is competitive. But there are a lot of competitors in this area. But there's one area but they have a flaw, all of the rest of them, and that's governance. So we think that um, the success story of, of doing this is to have a very clear view of the importance of governance and trust, and then show our clients, how do you do it? How do you take a large language model into your organization and make it trusted, safe, transparent, and all of that that you don't want in your organization? with dot governance. So we have, we have uh, presented this for one client, and it was a success. So um, now we're moving on with that one. But you know, uh, when you talk about the governance, it's, it's you're mostly of the guys and girls that we're talking that are not techie guys. They are lawyers <laughs> <laughs> and regulatory people. So one part interesting, so you took the, the cloud and you put it on the service on screen. Yeah. Tell us about that and tell us the, how do you present this to the end, end client. So when we started this journey with ADAX, we, we started to talk with our clients. This is a platform, AI for Business, that's going to evolve. Not everything's going to be on place at the first time. It's going to evolve. And when we start, it's going to be on the cloud. But that doesn't hesitate us from, from doing it because it's going to end down on-prem. So we, we, we have been very transparent with our customers that we start at the cloud and then come to on-prem. But don't hesitate to look at the functionality because that's the most important thing. So that has been our strategy uh, when it comes to talking about cloud and talking about on-prem. Amazing. So, so tell us a bit more about uh, uh, one case study. So you have this case study where you pick the, the Watson X model, yep. you put it in data, and you took it to your service. But the end game product and the case study, for instance, uh, for a governmental institution, I know that you've been working as well with uh, uh, local welfare systems. Tell us a bit about the end game product or case study. The end game product, are you talking well, because uh, ADA is a service that we are provided to our clients. Yeah. And I will also tell you that um, we didn't all, only do this thing with the technology because that's only half of the game. The other game is the financial side. Yeah. So what we have done is that uh, a lot of uh, customers have, uh, you know, if you take IBM and you take the word platform, uh, some of our clients say, oh, that's a lot of money. <laughs> 
So we need to do, we need, we had to do something about the business model uh, to be able to crash that kind of a myth of IBM, a platform, a lot of money. And not open, it's Scott's product, it, it's closed. Um, so we invented our own model, business model, uh, for example, for Swedish municipality. And um, we have done this with other products also, with content and file net. So they, they can, the usage are measured month per month. So it's like buying uh, IBM technology on tap. And it's working perfectly. But we invented that. So, and for a little, little specialist company as our, ourselves, I think it's incredible that we have been able to do this kind of stuff with... Uh, within the international big company like IBM. But, you know, that's our relation. If we didn't have a relation and we knew each other so well, they wouldn't, uh, we wouldn't have their air. So, so one last question. Uh, uh, I know that we have limited time. So in terms of, uh, you mentioned the governance. Yeah. And you use the platform for the governance. Yeah. So how did you adapt towards the, I know that Sweden has very strict yeah. private laws. Yeah. How did you adapt the governance system that comes integrated in Watson X um, a governance system with the local system of... Uh... Well, we, we did like this. Uh, what we have learned, you know, we have in Sweden, for example, we have a very strong open source strategy. Everybody, it's open source first, open source first, open source first. Uh, so what we had to do is... Uh, how do you end up for you know a, a public sector you're saying okay every public sector is working they're functional like everybody else but that's not the case everybody has their own best practices their yeah. own rules their own regulatory so you can't have you can't have one big solution one swedish all governance yeah. solution presented to all and here is for free it's open use it that's not the case so what we did is to show if, okay, you can work with, uh, for example, AI Sweden. They invented a large Swedish language model that you can use for free. But when you take it home into your own business, you have to govern it. You have to put governance on it with your own special regulator. So what we did is that we took that one, took a, a large language model, put the governance and showed how do you do the metrics of your own. I'm not listening to other, other guys. Yeah, exactly. I'm just listening to my business. And we tweak on that one, and we tweak on that one, and we tweak on that one, and let's see how it works. Oh no, that was not good. Tweak on that one, and we tweak on that one, tweak on that one. And now, it, now it can feel safe that this language model is governed, it's trusted, and we can feel safe to put it into production. So that's how we're working in getting our clients to feel trust in using a product yeah. by showing. So you said that you took the, the system from IBM what, Yeah, uh, the dot governance. Dot yep. governance yep. And then you adapted to the Swedish system. Yeah. You did, did it purely for technology or as well with the Swedish regulators? The, the Swedish regulators. Okay, that's what I That's question. working. In, for example, if you have a specific public sector uh, that has their own, for example, uh, uh, child, uh, I don't know what this English Welfare. Is. Welfare, yeah. yeah. Uh, they have their own regulatory on how yeah, to do so, their yeah, business yeah. and how to, what is the best practice and, and how to govern. So, uh, so that's, I don't know if I answered the question, but that's the no, way that we are working. We, we like, in a, like an ecosystem. You, oh, you can use all of the IBM platform. You can use the AI, you can use data, you can use, that's the best, in the best world, that would be the case. But right now, there are a lot of competitors yeah, I understand. on the generative AI. And also in the data, you know, have a, you have all the BI architecture that have been yes. working a long, long time with ETL and that kind. Uh, so to differ, the governance is the difference between the competitors. And I, I should say what one of our clients, who we, the one that we showed this, he said like this. This is exactly what we are looking for. And you know, when you get that from a client, you just you bullseye. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so you know that you, all right, we have something here. We have something here. 
So I just call, I just call, I call IBM and just said, oh, guys, we had, a, we had a client who said, bullseye. Ah, here we have something that we need to work on. So right now it's a huge uh, amount of activity regarding this governance. So I, hopefully when we're here, I will meet some uh, people that are uh, from, maybe from the project management. That's, That's why this kind of an event is so important after pandemic. Uh, we, ha we have a real need to see each other. Uh, it's very important. Yeah, 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 because you know the Zoom windows and the Teams windows and Skype windows. No. Well, first of all, congratulations. Uh, we'll put a bit more information about the case study and what you did, which is quite sensitive because yep. talking about welfare of a country and with data. Uh, well done and kudos and fantastic about the success.